So, animation is the method of manipulating pictures so that they appear as moving images. Now, take a look at the picture I actually have inside my scene. You actually see that I have a picture one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I have six pictures. Imagine if you actually play those six pictures within one second. I show you to them differently. You know, within one uh, um, one second, what you actually see is the movement of the ball from one direction to another. You actually see a bouncing ball. So that is actually the idea of animation. So animation is a method of manipulating pictures so that they appear as moving images. So it's a manipulation. It's not really like it's actually being moved, but we have series of pictures that are actually made. Uh, playing such a way that you actually see them moving or you see the illusion of it actually moving. Now, what is 3D animation? And 3D animation is a method of animation that creates the illusion of mo motion using three dimensional objects. So, the idea of three dimensional objects are objects that actually have uh, three axes. So, you have your Y, your Z, and the X axis. Basically, it means that you can actually rotate around it, you're all around it. Unlike the other one we actually saw before, where you can actually see just a part of it, just the flat surface. Now, the software we'll be using for this uh, course is called Blender. And Blender is a free and open source 3D animation suite. Um, Blender can be used for create, to create uh, 3D visualizations such as still images, videos, and real time interactive video games. So, you have an example of a scene being created inside Blender. So, you can actually uh, use Blender for 3D animation. There are other softwares like Maya, 3ds Max, and Cinema 4D, and a lot of other softwares. So, what we're going to be using for this class is Blender. Now, to download Blender, you go to the website www.blender.org. There, you can actually be able to find um, resources on Blender. You can see more things. You can Get the documentations from your website. So basically, you have the, the, the software that's when you actually want to download it. You can just go to the website and you have your the latest Blender version. Depending on the same you're actually using, you can actually download it. Now, let's talk about techniques of animation. And there are various techniques of animation that we are going to be using, uh, people actually use. Okay, so we're actually going to use 2D animation. Uh, the technique of 3D animation for our own animation. So, but basically, uh, people can use uh, about five or even more different kinds of animation. But there are basically five. The first one is traditional animation. The traditional animation is one that, if you actually remember, uh, movies like uh, cartoons like uh, Tom and Jerry or Mickey Mouse. Basically, traditional animation are, are animations that are actually drawn with their hands. You know, you have artists that actually draw every frame. Of the, the animation. So when you have the character about jump, when it's on the air, when it's in the air, and when it's actually it actually jump down, all those things are, are the things that you have to actually draw. The idea we call it traditional animation is that we literally have to draw every single thing that will be shown inside the animation. So I won't dwell so much on it. So stop motion is more like uh, you can actually use it uh, use a real picture or a real image or a real thing to actually do stop motion where you just take pictures and you can play those pictures you know uh, in successive time okay so i don't really know how i'm going to explain that to you but basically for example now let me let me, let me try to explain this so basically if you want to do stop motion you can be able to you can get um a cup basically a cup and you take a picture of the cup when it's still uh, straight and maybe you take another picture when it has fallen and you have another picture of where you move it another direction you take another picture of where you move another direction now if you play those four pictures within one second what you actually see is the movement of the cup falling down and dropping and you know, rolling to another direction so that's the idea of stop motion so just more like camera movement and your cameras you snap a particular thing and that particular thing you, you change the motion the movement or the position of that particular thing physically so we have to the animation the one that actually uses uh, the main things that are in Y and X axis. And we also have the 3D animation where you actually have three dimensions. So you can actually revolve around it. So we have motion graphics. Motion graphics basically uh, um, is a matter of the animation that we actually uh, use real graphics and we'll put them into things like maybe 
uh, TV show, you have uh, graphics coming up, uh, maybe as the name of the person, or maybe a newscast, or maybe just an intro video, just basically graphics that are actually in motion, alright? So we use it in different things, like if you look at the bomb match when they actually started, they have the picture or more like a sort of a little bit of animation or moving pictures of the players in the field, they will show the names of the people. You know, that's basically the idea of motion graphics. So I don't want to go deep into that. I just wanted to actually talk that a bit so that you actually know that there are several ways you can actually do animation, but we are dwelling on 3D animation for this our course. So movies are created with 3D animation, like at Shrek, the Final Fantasy, Boss Baby, Rise of a Guardian, there are a lot, a lot of you know, movies are actually created with 3D animation. Now, what are the job opportunities in 3D animation? Now, first, before I actually talk about this, I like to always encourage my students to, <clears throat> to specialize in something, alright? So, if you actually look at uh, the field you are in right now, you can begin to think about how do I specialize in something using my 3D animation skills. So, you actually see that 3D animation can go into a lot of you know fields. <clears throat> now we have the first one, the film production. You can produce movies. You can produce TV, uh, television programs, and um, whether working directly with them or working as a contractor, where you actually do your own content and actually franchise with television stations. That's all for you. You have 3D animation uh, for video games. You can actually go into video games too, and you can actually be able to make. Uh, wonderful contents for video games what are you the one programming it because it's very easy for a 3d animator to <clears throat> go into video games and then we we'll also have um, for uh, for advertising so you can actually go into advertising to 3d animation basically you can see a lot of uh, animations you know um, you, they use 3d animation for different programs or different uh, products <coughs> excuse me now we also have the scientific visualization, education, medicine. These three basically are uh, used for visualizing things that will rather be a bit um, not so realistic if it's not visualized at a computer. For example, if I was trying to tell you how to digest the stomach, uh, definitely you cannot actually open someone's stomach to actually show that, or you can actually um, use uh, an animation of the stomach of food digesting the stomach, you know. And you create inside a 3D software to explain to someone, maybe to a child. So whether it's for medicine or for education or for a scientific visualization, depending on the field you are, you can actually apply 3D animation in that field. Then we also have law, so you can visualize crime scenes to put a point in the court. <clears throat> so it's not actually something you can't use there, it's something you can actually use in the court to you know simulate different crime scenes or something. Or maybe you're trying to actually prove about someone's health or someone's experience. You can actually use studio animation to actually illustrate it to people for better understanding. Then you have your archivist or architectural visualization. Here you actually uh, build, um, let's say for example, now someone builds, um, creates a, a, a sort of plan for a building. Now you want to sell that idea to someone maybe you want to actually get funding or you want to actually sell it to your client this is the, the house you want to build now basically most people when they see the map they, they, they the plan of the house they don't actually appreciate the beauty of the house most times but imagine if you could actually create the entire 3 dimension or three-dimensional version of that particular thing how it will look like how the cushion will be in the house the lights the, the, the color of the, the entire house, the roof, everything, and someone sees <clears throat> how it will be when the person is actually done. That's the idea here. So, we have also product visualization. You can create someone's product, you know, product that you haven't even created. Instead of going in directly to them, create it, you can actually first create a computer. The person makes all his corrections before you actually go into production. If you're a shoemaker, you can actually do that. You can create new shoes that nobody has ever thought of. And then someone goes for it, and then you start producing instead of going to start producing and then start looking for someone that watching you buy. <clears throat> then you have your evangelism. You can actually go into um, using tradition for evangelism, like uh, Jehovah's Witness. They use that a lot. And some other, uh, if you go online, you see a lot of 3D animated uh, evangelical or Bible teaching uh, videos. And lastly, we have simulated training system for pilots, drivers, and soldiers. 
So mostly, um, <clears throat> if you want to train someone, especially things like pilots, um, that's people that drive the, the plane, or drivers for cars, or soldiers, or some other kind of training, where um, you don't want to actually put the person in a real experience before the person gets the training, the best thing to do is to actually create a simulated experience for the person. And it will not enable the person to get acquainted with what he will experience in real life before he actually goes to the experience. And you don't want to train your soldier in a real war. You want to train him in a simulated war so he actually understands how it works instead of before he actually goes into that. So, a pilot, you don't want to take him to the plane. You want to simulate him. You want to train him in a simulated uh, uh, kind of aeroplane experience before he actually goes to the real thing. <clears throat> so, like I said, Try to find a niche and uh, specialize in it. That is actually what you need. So if you try to do all these things, it's not bad, but it's advisable you specialize in a niche. So these are examples of things. So you have product design. I can design a product like I'm a carpenter. I can actually design a, a sort of a furniture that I want to do for someone. The person will make all, all his corrections inside the computer and then I will start my production. Then you have three logos you can do for businesses. And you can go for product visualization. You can maybe a company wants to create a new product, maybe a new bottle for a particular uh, drink company. Maybe they make drinks, they, they produce drinks. So you can actually create all those things for them inside the software and they make all the operations there. So you have product adverts, you can advertise for companies also and make very nice uh, products, uh, animations that can increase the awareness of your product and increase your sales also. So you have the archivists where you can actually be able to create a architectural visualization of estates, of buildings, and help you to actually visualize what it looks like when they actually finish every single thing there. So we also have a product demo. You can demonstrate products to people also. And you know, maybe you want to show someone how the product actually works, you can actually demonstrate inside a computer. So you can also go ahead to get great game scenes. So and uh, like this particular one now you can actually create uh, inside uh, Blender, um, an offshoot of Blender called EPBG, you can actually create game scenes, alright, for companies or for your own self, and you can actually be able to program them, alright, using visual scripting, very simple stuff, and it's something that you can actually go into. So now at the end of our project, we intend to be able to finish this particular thing here. So I, I intend that I, I believe that by the end of our course, we should be able to actually create this animation version animation of this iPhone <coughs> 13. So we'll be talking about how to create the model, texture it, light it, and do every other thing around it. So first, let's talk about um, the interface. The interface is just more like the, the entire part of the, the, the system or the, the software you're going to be using. So Blender here. So I would like to actually go straight into Blender. So to turn on the software, I will just go over here to where I have my start button. Or rather, I will go to where I have my Blender icon here. So my tags bar. So you should have it on your own system too. So I will open this and this is my entire scene. So one of the first shortcuts I always teach my students is T. So if you press T, you can actually be able to move your tools or bring them back, okay? I also have N to bring out this panel here, but we'll not be using this so much right now. So the first um, thing you want to know is that this is your viewport, all right? So I will briefly be showing you different things you're going to be doing, different controls when you actually want to work. So you have your outliner here and different panels I will be working with. I want us to go into that. But basically, this is your timeline here. When you start doing animation, you actually see uh, there are frames. It is uh, 20 frames, 40 frames, and other things here. So other we have other things here like file. Okay. So but the two things I want you to focus on right now for these are our work for today will be these tools here that we'll be using. Okay. If you look at when I change them, you see how it changes things here. And also the views that we actually have here. So you have a uh, the material viewport, the viewport shading mode. It is material preview mode. If you look at what is written over there. So now let's go into um, 3D modeling um, because I have some controls I want to show you. Now 
3D modeling is the art and science of creating a surface that either mimics the shape of a real world object or expresses your imagination of abstract objects. So you have an example of a bedroom where you actually you know, you can create it, it could be a real life thing, it could be something that you actually imagined. Then so now when you want to create a scene in 3D, all right, so we'll have some um, basic tools and techniques we're going to be using. So the first thing we want to talk about is uh, zoom in and zoom out, okay? I just want to go through it and I want to note this because we're actually going to go into the software to actually uh, select, you know, do all these things here. So we'll have a left click to select, right click to bring out your command menu, all right? We have different commands. You have your holding down the middle mouse button and navigating, all right? To so navigate around the scene. Okay, I'm coming to that part. So holding down the middle mouse plus shift, okay, to pan. So bear in mind the name of the command is actually to pan around the three, the pan the entire 3D scene. Okay. So okay, before we talk about this shift, I want us to actually show uh, these things in practice. So for example, I have uh, the first one zoom in and out. So if you scroll, if you hold your middle mouse button, the scroll wheel. Okay. I don't have the picture here, but you can just scroll forward or backwards. That's how you scroll. Now, if you click, it will select anything. I see I have my camera here. I can select it, I can select this, okay? Now, if I hold down, that's the second thing. Now, the third thing there is, if I hold down the middle mouse button, and with this is how I navigate around, okay? I'm holding down, I'm pressing down the middle mouse button. That's the scroll wheel, the wheel, not the left or the right, the one in the center that looks like a wheel. So if I hold it down, I can be able to scroll around it, okay? So I can scroll around and around. So if I want to go below or on top, I can do that. Now the next thing is I can hold down the middle mouse button, hold down my shift, the shift button, the shift key on the keyboard, and you can be able to pan everything. So for example, now sometimes you're working on a scene and an object is somewhere far away, you want to bring it to the center here. You simply hold your shift, pan, and bring it to the center here. So that's actually how you walk inside a 3D scene. So scroll, middle mouse, shift, pan, all right. Click to select, all right. All right, so uh, right click to bring out your commands. So you have different commands like smoothing, shade smooth and shade flat. Some other things we might be talking about later. So that's basically your basic controls. So the next control we actually have is shift D to duplicate and how to rotate S and G, S to scale and then G for position. So look at how it is here. Yeah? If I select this, I will press Shift D and it will duplicate, all right? So that's how you duplicate. If I press delete, I can delete it. And if I select this, if I press S, I will scale. Are you seeing this? If I press G, I will hold it and I can move it, all right? If I press R, I can rotate it. Now there is one more thing I want you to understand. If I want to move this, I will use this control widgets here. Look at this, my 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 control uh, tools here. So I have my move tool. I can move it on an axis. So see where I'm actually trying to get now. This where I have this line. I can move it along that axis. I can go over here, click this along that axis. I can turn around with my middle mouse. Click this around, okay, and move it along that particular axis. So we we'll have this Y the X and the Z axis there. So if I want to rotate, I can use that to rotate. So make sure you use it at the right time, not to um, put your, your work out of alignment. So you do that, all right? So you can rotate on an axis, any axis you actually want. So I'm just going to do Ctrl Z to bring it back to normal. All right? I want it to actually be straightforward. So the next thing here I have is my scale. Scale will enable me to scale it either on this axis, or that axis, that's Y axis, or the Z axis. So these are the things we can actually be able to do. Okay, so we're going to actually come to that part. So after that, let's talk about how to add a reference image. So we're going to turn on the reference image add-on in case you don't have it turned on on your system because by default, if you actually downloaded a new Blender, you will not see the the, the file import this image as plain okay that's how you import a reference okay well, how other ways of 
transparent rank but i want us to use this technique for the meantime so now i want us to turn it on the add-on so before i turn it on reference is more like a guide okay something that guides you when you want to make uh, 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 uh you want to create design so let's say you want to create uh, the bottle of coke inside your software you want to get a real picture of a bottle of coke so that it guides you to know what actually does the shape really look like because you might assume you know it but by the time you actually start working you you know you see that it's not going to be working very often even if you have it physically it's better inside the software than when you just have it physically outside all right so we'll have a picture so but before we can do that we have to uh, go to edit all right we'll go to preference and inside our preference so i'm going to go to add-on okay and i'll click here and type play so make sure you're actually using a uh, blender 2.8 and upwards for you to do this if not you have to go to file and uh, uh, user preference that's where it is 2.7 so right here if i click on that plane by default this will be turned off so i'll just turn this on all right i'll just click it to turn it on and save preference Let's close it once i do that i can be able to go to file import and i will see my image as plain all right so let's import an image as plain that will be our reference so if i go to image image as plain now depending on where um, the reference will actually save in your in your own um system okay you can ask your instructor and he will actually show you that so or wherever you save in your system you will have to you know either your desktop or wherever it is you have to actually go to your reference okay where you actually have it now for this design okay we'll be using this first okay this is our first uh, reference we'll be using we'll also be using this one too so i'll double click on it and bring it in now when you bring it in it's going to be inside if, if you look at it you actually see it um active there you see the, the color there so i'll press s to scale it up so s is for scaling up all right so if you press s and move your mouse Yes, move your mouse for um towards the right, move it towards the left as if you're coming closer, it will become smaller towards that side. That's my mouse actually moving. This thing you actually see in that is uh, like two arrows. So my mouse moving. So I can be able to use this one and push it backwards a bit because I want it to be in front of here. Alright. Now you won't see anything until you go ahead and turn on this uh, material preview mode. The preview mode will enable us to be able to see what our reference will look like so this is the, the reference we're using for building our mobile phone all right so um that's basically that so the next thing we'll have is um okay, we'll talk about how to turn on our add-on so i'm importing our plane and turning on our viewport mode our material viewport mode so the next thing is how do we add primitive shapes and objects so primitive shapes are more like uh the building blocks of our modeling so we'll have planes uh, just like flat surfaces you have cubes that will be like cubes or circles or cylinders and if you want to create let's say a very complicated um, structure you want to get different um, let's say a plane and you begin to extrude it and you know change and it did different parts of it to be able to actually create that you know structure that you have so for example we'll have the primitives we'll have here uh, things like plane cube okay and circles and cylinders so but the shortcut to bring it in is sheet a all right so you can actually add that into your scene so when you add it you can actually be able to scale it or move it wherever you actually want using the control widgets all right so we'll do your selecting our scaling moving and rotating of an object now um let's go into the software and see what it looks like so this side software i will just delete this so that you actually see what i'm doing so if i press sheet a with my mouse inside this particular uh, viewport sheet a i have my mesh i can be able to actually uh, bring this out okay and um, impute any particular uh, objects or mesh we have my primitives if i don't want to use sheet a i will have to go to add mesh all right and do that so but i will prefer to use sheet a so we'll get into the shortcuts so i'm going to get in a cube so I want to be able to make that cube to be of this size. So I would like to bring this up with my uh, movement uh, tool here. 
I move to, I'm going to use my middle mouse to pan this and uh, I'm going to pan a bit, align it to this. So I want to be looking at it as if I'm trying to trace the size of this because it is my reference. So basically you might not, uh, you might think you know the size of a mobile phone but you might make that mistake and make it too long or too short or too fast. So the next tool I'm going to use is the scale because I want you to scale to these sides and to up here. So I'm going to select the scale and I'm going to scale it up like that. And I'm going to use this uh, move, bring it up a bit. Okay, I think I need to scale a bit more. So I'm trying to get the size exactly and then scale on my Y axis like that. So it might not be very accurate, but the, the guide gives me a, a rough uh, estimate of what the mobile phone should look like. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come over to this side. Okay. So because if you're looking at your, your design or your model from one side, it's going to be one sided. But if you actually go around, you see how fat or how thin it is. So I will get my scale tool again. Just click. Don't click and hold. It's a different thing. Just click. And I'll select it and I'll scale it down like that. Now mind you don't rotate. You know, if you rotate it will actually go out of alignment. You start doing something like that. Don't do that. Just make sure that you have this. So if you have any problem with that, go press N, go over here and make sure you have your your rotations zero. Okay, you just put zero there, alright? Zero in all of them. Maybe it was seven. Or maybe something you see it's not a straight just make sure it's zero right so that a lot of people had that issue in class so I'm going to do that okay so the next thing we want to do is edit an object in edit mode now we're not really going to go deep into this this is just a basic thing we're going to talk about now when you actually walk in here you have your object mode edit mode sculpt mode these are different modes that you're going to be working in all right so the object mode enables you to bring in any object, any object you bring in, in this particular mode is on its own. But then when you go into edit mode, now edit mode enables you to be able to select the vertex, alright? You have vertices, different vertices, alright? So I can select a vertex, use this move tool and drag it, okay? We're going to be doing this more in our class. In, in, in class. So we'll have this here and we can be able to drag that we have the edge see where i'm getting that from at the top here you can drag it on one side you have the face the entire face like this you can drag it up so we're not going to really use that for now i just want to show you that but we're not going to be using that for our class right now so this is basically uh the the object being moved in edit mode okay so next thing is um we're going to model the same mobile phone which we have already started modeling. So I'm going to duplicate this to actually create this particular part of it. So it's more like uh, this particular part of the phone. So I'm going to actually add um, a cylinder. These are the primitives and uh, add the side of the bottom sides here. And you have a, uh, and then we'll save our project. So basically that's what we're going to do. So let me just go ahead and do that first. So to be able to actually create um, my the this part of my camera okay so i'm going to do shift d when i do shift d to, and click to accept it will duplicate i can move this back so there are two right now okay remember shift d to duplicate i'll get my scale scale this down on this axis then on that axis so i'm going to do that scale this back a bit like that and get my move to and Take this up, bring this back. Okay, so I have this. So I'm going to. Don't worry about the idea is not rounded. We have not even got to that part yet. So I'm going to scale it down a bit. Push it back. Oh. Let's see if it's close to it. All right. So I think um, basically we can work with this that so now i want to get my the camera here so i'm going to go shift a again and um this thing is called the physical side it means whatever i add now coming here 
to shift A, I have my cylinder, it comes in. I'm going to drag it up, drag it to this side, okay, drag it here. So I'm going to press S to scale. I'm scaling now. Now, if you notice, it's facing upwards and down. Okay, I want it to face this way horizontally here on the x axis. So I'm going to R, rotate it on the y axis. All right, if I press R, I can rotate anyhow. But if I press Y, rotate on the Y axis. If I pre press X, it will rotate on the X axis. If I press R, Z, it will rotate on the Z axis. Okay, so I'm going to rotate on this axis so that it will actually rotate like this. All right, so I will R, Y, and press 90. Enter key. All right, R, Y, 90. Enter key. So it will rotate on the Y axis. Okay. So if it doesn't work, try the X axis. Just press R X 90. So I'm going to select that and then push it back a bit. So I will scale on this axis, right? So I'm going to pull this one out like that. I think I would like to increase it a bit. It's a bit for uh, future things in that axis and the X axis. Bring this up. So we have this scale down. So that's all we are going to be doing. So uh, we're not going to do any other thing. I'm just going to stop here so that it um, doesn't be too confusing. So the next thing to do is to save our work. So to save, you go to File, go to Save As, and um, just uh, when you save, you go to your file and you can be able to actually name it uh, give it your name okay so i can call my own steven and um, go to the appropriate folder you can create a folder called blender okay and inside the folder just double click on the folder any folder you actually use and you click on save to actually save it inside it so that's um, all we're going to actually do for now So thank you very much for being part of the class. Uh, if you have any other question, you can ask me in the class or from the platform you can actually ask me questions and I'll be very delighted to give you answers. And I also advise that you go online to look for other resources, do your personal training and personal development and I'm very, very sure that you're going to actually learn a lot from this student mission because it's a very wonderful course and it can put you uh, on, the, on the path to a very wonderful career. Thank you very much for listening.